Well, hi everyone, I'm Andrew Miller and this is Idea Dispenser. So this week, Facebook launched an app called Rooms and it's an app that lives on your iPhone that lets you, totally separate of your Facebook identity, create a chat room or message board or sort of chat space around a topic of your choosing and with people that you want to interact with. Now, for those of us who've been on the internet for a long time, this feels like a very old school concept. In fact, it feels like what MUDs and chat rooms and message boards and instant messenger used to feel like back when the internet was a much smaller and a much freer place. In 2014, we sort of have ended up in this space where we are one sort of medium version of ourselves most of the time. So thinking about Facebook proper, for example, you have people from all different areas of your life that are watching what you say, interacting with you, commenting, and interacting with each other. People who study the internet talk about this as context collapse. This is really the idea that you're still yourself, but you're different versions of yourself in different areas of your life. So you might act differently at work than you do at home. You might talk differently to your parents than to your children, than to your friends. And in the offline world, this is very easy to do because you just adjust the way that you behave to the situation that you're in. And only the people that are around you observe your behavior and hear what you have to say. On something like Facebook or Twitter, you sort of end up being this sort of medium version of yourself that's a version of yourself that's appropriate to a number of different spheres. And that's a really hard thing to do, and people aren't used to thinking of that way. That's where you have situations where people suddenly, a friend that you know says something super strange, or you accidentally say something slightly disparaging an authority figure who then comments or likes on that post. So in 2014, we've ended up in this place where many of us have successfully integrated our online and offline selves into this system called Facebook or into this system called Twitter. And this has brought us a lot of benefits, but it can sort of feel like you're hamstrung, that you're not able to be all of those different versions of yourselves, and you're not able to have as much fun as we did when the internet was sort of your crazy old uncle who's a little bit of a hippie who just says, yeah, sure, say what you want, here's a place. So Rooms is part of that trend, along with apps like Whisper and uh, Yik Yak and Secret. I've been using Yik Yak and Rooms recently, and so those are the ones that I know the most about. And in a lot of ways, they really do feel like the old internet is back. And the way that they accomplish this is kind of interesting. So Yik Yak, for example, is totally anonymous unless you choose to add a username, but most people don't. It is just location-based, and it's based around colleges and university campuses. So you say sort of a Twitter-length thing, and people around that university campus can uh, vote it up, vote it down, comment on it, and they can see where you were when you made the post. So the way that Yik Yak combats this sort of context collapse from Facebook is not only does it not tie itself to your sort of one master identity, but it also limits who could possibly see the stuff by only people who live in, in my case, the Seattle area. Rooms does this in a, a different and I think actually much more interesting way, which is that as the creator of a room, you set sort of, you know, the, the look and feel, you can change the like button, you can change your username, you can set a background, and you can set the topic for conversation. But the way that you tell people about it is through an invite code. And the only way that you can get into a room is to find this QR code, which is like a little 2D barcode, and to take a screenshot of it on your phone. And then when you open up rooms, it checks your photos, it looks at the code, and it adds you to the room. Uh, you know that somebody has arrived at this place organically. They didn't just type a URL and then suddenly arrive uh, to spam you. And the title of the room is printed on that little invite code. So you know that they have some idea of what they're walking into and that they know someone who's already in the room. So that's interesting. The other thing that's, that's interesting about it is that it feels more personal because it is only on your phone. It is only available uh, for the iPhone at the moment and it is not available on the web. So you know that when somebody's interacting with rooms, that it's them and their phone, and they are having a private moment into the room. 
you know that they're not sort of, you know, at a computer terminal in a library somewhere, or they're not on a work computer, that they're having a, a more personal interaction. And that device already has a camera in it, so they're easily able to take or share photos. So I don't really know whether Rooms itself will catch on. This cool invite feature might actually turn out to be a bad idea, but it definitely feels like we're having a moment where the internet is breaking apart again a little bit to let us have more fun. And I think it's very interesting that a company like Facebook that owns the biggest identity platform in the world recognizes that there are some limitations to what they can do with the Facebook product and that they want to be a part of helping figure out what the social internet is going to look like in the years and decades to come. So anyway, just some thoughts and rooms and what I think it means after using it for a couple days. These videos are going to start to pick up again. I'm going to put a link to a room that I started for Idea Dispenser in the description. So go ahead and if you have the rooms app, go ahead and click on that and I will see you on the internet.